All right, let's talk about the size principle. This is a concept that describes how we go about recruiting motor units to generate the amount of force that we want. I'll explain this as we go. This is a very key concept that's gonna come back time and time again throughout the semester. So hopefully you get it down with this video or, or shortly thereafter. Hopefully definitely get it down by the end of the semester. So motor units, remember a motor unit is a nerve and the muscle fibers that it innervates or touches. Uh, when that nerve is activated with an action potential, it sends that action potential to a bunch of different muscle cells and all of those will contract at the same time. So one motor unit is the nerve and all the muscles that it innervates to cause to contract. Now we have in general three types of motor units. We have small motor units. Uh, this, these are made up of smaller muscle fibers and they, there aren't a lot of muscle fibers in that unit. So when the nerve fires, it's only contracting a few muscle fibers. Uh, and by a few, if we're talking about our leg, it's probably somewhere around 500 to 800 muscle cells contracting at once. But that's relatively few compared to the thousands and thousands and thousands of muscle fibers that are in your leg. So these small units uh, generate a little bit of force, not a ton because they're small. There's not a lot of them. And the fibers themselves are small. Uh, what we'll learn a little bit later is these, mus these small units we refer to as type one units or slow twitch units. You might have heard of that before. Then we have a second type of fiber. Let me change the color here. Uh, green seems nice. We'll call these medium units. And these are what we would refer to, we'll refer to later as type 2A muscle fiber types. So these medium units, they, the nerve is bigger, it's medium size, and it innervates more muscle fibers. So instead of innervating like 500, like the small units, that nerve might innervate 750. And because of that, when that one nerve fibers, fires, it's gonna generate more force. Uh, also those muscle fibers, as you'll find out later, uh, are bigger than the slow twitch or the type one muscle fibers. So being bigger, they can generate a little more force. Uh, and they, they have a little bit of mitochondria, uh, a moderate amount. And the mitochondria are what help the muscle to keep firing. They create ATP to allow the muscle to keep contracting. So small units generate a small amount of force, but they have a lot of mitochondria and have a huge amount of endurance. You can keep firing those guys all day. Medium units generate more force have a moderate amount of mitochondria, so you can fire them for a while, uh, but not forever. And then you have these large units. Oh, let me change the color here. These large units will be, let's see, what's your favorite color? We're gonna do orange, because orange seems extreme. These large units, you're only going to recruit when you're desperate, okay? They generate a lot of force because there's a big neuron that innervates a ton of muscle fibers. So instead of the 500 or 750 that the others might do, these might do, I don't know, 1,250, 1,500 muscle cells, right? So when that one neuron is firing, it's telling a lot of fibers to contract all at once. So it generates a lot of force. The problem with these large motor units and why I say you only do them when you're desperate is because they fatigue so fast. Uh, their energy systems are all about generating ATP very quickly, but not for a prolonged amount of time. So you, they're good for a couple of seconds and then they're out. So these large units, we would refer to these as, we'll refer to them later as type 2 X. And these are the muscle fiber types. So slow twitch, fast twitch, muscle fiber types. All right, so how does this apply? What's the size principle? How does this all apply? So let's go back to red here. 
So let's say that you need to, you're going to exercise. You're going to get up from your computer and start walking around and you need to generate that much force or that much power. Okay. So what the size principle says is that you're going to recruit your small motor units first. And so here's a small motor unit. It can generate that much force. That's not enough, right? So that's not enough to generate all the force that we need. So we can't just get away with one motor unit firing. We got to recruit another one. So we recruit that same first motor unit. But now we'll add on a second motor unit. So here we had one motor unit firing. Now we have two motor units firing to get that amount of force. And we recruit these small muscle fibers first. And the very simple reason that they get recruited first is because the neurons are smaller and easier to depolarize. So to generate that much force, we recruit first these slow twitch fibers or small motor units. But let's say now instead of generating that much force, you want to generate this much force. So instead of getting up and walking, you want to get up and run because you're really sick of this lecture. So what are you going to do? Well, let's see. You, if you recruit three of these slow twitch or type small motor units, it's not going to get you there. So let's go to four. But the thing is, once we've recruited these three motor, three slow twitch motor units, we're out of slow twitch. So now we move on to our next best for endurance, which are going to be these medium sized motor units or our type 2A units. And the boxes for these are going to be bigger because there are more, these motor units are larger. They, that neurons activating more muscle fibers. So now we've generated enough force with four motor units. That's going to be the three original slow twitch or small units and a fourth medium size unit to get that amount of force. Okay. Now let's get a little crazy here. Let's say that you, uh, you want to sprint out of here. I don't know what the reason is. You get up from your computer and you really have to go to the bathroom. So you sprint. So you have to generate that much force. Let me do that again. That much force or that much speed. So let's see, can we get it with five motor units? We do, we recruit those original three slow twitch units. Not enough. So we go on to recruiting that, that one medium sized unit that we did before. Still not enough. So we recruit another medium sized unit that we have lying around. Not enough. So five motor units isn't going to get it done. So we, now we have to move on to our to at least six. And so we're going to six units. So we're going to do these same three slow twitch units again. Can you see these slow twitch units or small units on the bottom are always going to be active. They're your base that your body prefers to use them. Even when we're sprinting, uh, running as fast as we can, these most likely are going to be activated. So we start off to run really fast. We recruited those. We recruit our medium sized units. We've run out of medium sized units. Now we're getting super desperate because we're going over to recruit these guys, the large ones, and we recruit a large unit. See, it generates a lot more force. The size of the box is bigger because the motor neuron, that neuron innervates a lot more muscle fibers, so it can generate more force with that motor unit. And we'll find out later that the, the actual muscle cells themselves and these large units, the type 2X, are a little special and they can generate a lot of force. So how have we generated a high amount of force or power? First, recruiting that, the initial slow units. They weren't enough, so now we get a little more desperate, recruit the medium units, still not enough. And finally, we recruit these large motor units. Now remember what I said about fatigability. 
these small units down here, these initial three units that we keep recruiting over and over, they have a great endurance. So if we're doing an exercise that, that only recruits these guys, like a, a moderate intensity exercise, it's only getting those small motor units, we should be able to do it for a long time because these, these motor units have lots of mitochondria, they get lots of blood flow, and they have no problem making ATP to supply enough to do moderate intensity exercise. But once we go to an intensity above that, Let's say we want to generate this much force. Now we're dependent on these medium units, which are going to fatigue eventually. Not right away, but within a couple of minutes, probably. So our endurance with those, extra, those muscle fibers is going to be less. And then finally, if we get up to an intensity like way up here, where we're dependent, we have to use these large motor units, uh, we can't hold that for very long, just a couple of seconds, maybe 20, 30 seconds at most, okay? Uh, these large motor units, great for generating power, but they give up quickly. They fatigue really fast. So some other key points about this size principle. Let's say that you want to get your muscle fibers bigger and stronger, okay? If you're just doing light intensity exercise, you're only going to be training these initial three small motor units while the all the large motor units are getting ignored so if you want to hypertrophy or enlarge the muscle the bigger muscle fiber types these larger motor units you need to do exercise that recruits those motor units so high force high power exercise will overload or stimulate these large units and once they're stimulated or overloaded then they have an incentive to adapt but if you spend all your day only activating these small motor units down here these large motor units have no reason to grow in fact what we see with aging sedentary aging as people get older they tend to be sedentary and they're not activating these big motor units your type 2A and type 2X fiber types. Guess what happens to them? They get smaller and they eventually disappear, right? So there's, if you want to keep these motor units, you need to exercise them. So this is a size principle. It influences a lot, a lot. It influences our endurance, like I just said, and power. Uh, some other characteristics of this that'll be important for the future, these, motor units here, your, your medium and large ones, type 2A and type 2X, these ones produce a lot of lactate. They have more capacity for glycolysis, which you'll learn about later. Uh, so once you start to recruit those motor units, once you exercise in an intensity that requires the type 2A, type 2X for these medium and large units, you'll start to see a lot more acid and a lot more lactate in the blood. Uh, ventilation will go up right about that point too. So just keep in mind, this size principle is going to influence a lot, and it all comes down to the size of the neuron. Small neurons are easy to depolarize. It doesn't take a lot of action, a lot of EPSPs to depolarize a small neuron, so we recruit them first. Medium-sized neurons and units require a little bit more EPSPs to depolarize, so they get recruited next. And these large ones take a lot of EPSPs to finally get them to threshold so that we recruit those last and only when we're most desperate. There are instances where you can uh, bypass this size principle and go directly to the large motor units. These are very rare, uh, but this would typically only happen in extremely explosive exercise, perhaps with like a baseball pitch. You might inhibit all these slower units and exclusively recruit that fast unit to generate the force and power so it doesn't slow you down. So that might be like with a baseball pitch, maybe something like a, a single power clean. 
but if anything going past like two or three seconds, that size principle is probably going to be uh, be at play and you're gonna have all your motor units going as at high intensity. All right, so that's it for now. I hope you uh, understand a little bit more about the size principle and I'll talk to you later.